episode of Moments with Murph. We're going to talk about types of women to have for relationships. And we're not going to beat around the bush. We're going to get right into it. So the first one you need to have is a carer. The carer is a person who knows how to nurture for sure. Like they know how to really get you back to health, whether it's mentally, physically, they know what to do. And honestly, these that I'm going to talk about, you, you want to look for all of them in one. If not, try to groom it. But the nurturer, like this is the one, I don't care what anybody says. Like this is my opinion. Everything I say is my opinion. I believe no one can take care of someone like a woman can. Like women know how to take care of people better than men do. Why do they say that women are better caregivers when for children than men are? I believe that's a proven fact too. Somebody can quote me on that one or stat fact check me on that one, but I believe it is stated that women are much better as far as caregiving than men is. Not gonna lie, that is okay. Like my wife, when I get one, and my child, when I get one, it's gonna be a long time for that one. But <laughs> I is I'm gonna be completely fine if she wants to, you know, take care of the child up until the age of five like if she wants to be like yo no i'm gonna take care of him like make sure he gets all his nurture you know she gets all her nurture all her love that's cool like of course i'm gonna be round but if i feel personally that she's gonna do way better because like i ain't gonna fake i'm over aggressive with stuff so i feel like she might you know do better i would definitely let her but once they come five yes the children are mine i am building elite children let that be known but also, like, they know how to really show that love and affection. Like, they're the ones who <clears throat> can really compose their feelings and they show that compassion to you. Like, they're the ones who make you open up. It's just like, oh, I didn't feel like talking about these things. I didn't really want to get into that. But, you know, since you're coming this way, since you're being this way, I feel like I am obligated to, you know, speak to you a certain way you know like you begin to open up to her and that's what she makes you feel at ease you know emotionally and for a guy that's really hard because why we have great walls up you wonder why because society says we better be strong there's no reason for emotions when you're a guy that's what society says <clears throat> that's not what murph says but murph has his own opinion but we're not gonna get to that <laughs> but they're the ones who really know how to allow you to confide in them and know how to confide in you and together, I, I, feel, I feel like that builds a strong bond. Because when you are able to really get attached to someone emotionally, that's when things get into weaken. However, when you can build that trust and that love and that loyalty with them, then the bond is way stronger than those broken walls will ever be. So, the carer, for sure. Next, we got the supporter. So, of course, if you heard a few weeks ago, when we're talking about the non-supporter, of course we have to have the supporter. And this woman is the one who has your back. She's going to be there. That's all you ask for. Please be there. And honestly, she's going to be there without you having to tell her. Because at the end of the day, you know and she's know that no one's going to have your back the way that she will. <clears throat> like, she's going to be the one who's always there. No matter what is going on, no matter what the issues is like of course everyone's going to have their differences of course like i don't think any relationship that is strong doesn't have its issues like honestly the people who be like oh yeah we don't have no problems we don't have no issues we don't argue ever we never had a falling out them the ones i'd be like mm, really hmm like in the back of my head i'm like well that's good but but <laughs> however I kind of question either if they're lying, which is fine, because, like, I really you lie to me sometimes in that instance because you don't want people in your business. Like, especially if I don't care, that's okay. But you don't want people in your business because that's how you get, you know, third-person views and nobody wants that. But between that or if they're actually going to last that long. Because, like, if y'all been having, like, this real peaches cream, you know, type of relationship, that means y'all really haven't had any hardships, you know? So, like... In that instance, I think when things really hit the fan, it's going to be kind of hard for them to really, you know, move along. But that's why I feel like when she's supporting, like, y'all going to have your issues. But some of those decisions that need to be made, you know, will be made strategically. And between both of y'all, y'all be able to move forth pretty solid. 
So there's that. Also, <clears throat> she's also going to want to help. That's something I love. Like, not only is she, you know, talking to you, speaking to you, you know, saying words of encouragement, but she's like, hey, I see that you're doing this, so guess what? I'm going to do this that's a part of what you're doing to ensure that you're not doing it all by yourself. That is something I love personally. Like, a woman who's not just going to sit back and watch. Like, she said, uh-uh, if my man's playing the field, guess what? I'm going to join him. I'm going to do whatever I can to actually help benefit him. This way, he's not taking, you know, the weight all on his shoulders. That burden's just not on his back. Like, some women love to see a man, <clears throat> you know, put the weight on his shoulders. You know, put the world on his back. Carry the team. And I ain't going to fake that. would be me sometimes. Like, I deny. <laughs> I deny help. I got to stop doing that. But, because I ain't going to fake. Like, sometimes it get overwhelming. And I've seen that within the past, like, two months. Like, some things you it's hard to just do by yourself. But when they're really in the field with you and they are helping you accomplish, like, that's what you need. You need somebody who's going to do more than a spectator. Like, spectators, if you think about it, all they do is watch. They look back and forth. Like, think about people on basketball courts. They go back and forth, back and forth, just rolling their eyes, looking their eyes, and you get the occasional, yeah, let's go, do it, I love it. But it's like, what are you doing? You just pumping hot air into the, the gym. Now I'm getting hotter, you know? Now I'm getting saltier. Like, I love the encouragement, but you're not making the atmosphere better just because, like, you're just putting up another condition for me to go through. And in a sense, like, that's how relationship is. Like, yeah, you're talking. I love your encouragement. I love what you're saying. However, it's like now you kind of at times have me multitasking. Because if you think about it, like, a conversation is going to be productive or not productive. Like, let's just say I'm trying to edit something, you know, where I need to hear. But you want to have a conversation. So that means one or two things aren't happening. That means I'm not editing or it's taking me much longer to edit because I got to keep waiting for you to hush <laughs> for me to press play and edit so I can really get to you know what I'm trying to do or I'm not really listening to you. So this means that you're talking, but it's going in one ear and right out the other. So at the end of the conversation, guess what? I heard nothing. I, I nodded. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I understand. But I didn't really pay attention to what you were saying. So in this instance... Again, you're just adding another obstacle in a sense. But so the ones who are really out there with their man are dearly appreciated. Because overall, she just wants to see you accomplish your goals. And that's what makes a supporter so awesome. Like, she's just not there just to be there. Like, she's giving you words of encouragement, but she's also helping to actually be in the field to overall help you accomplish the goals. Because if you think about it, when you accomplish your goals, then y'all can accomplish goals because that's one less thing he has to worry about or you have to worry about. And when you, you know, have some of that weight taken off, guess what? It makes the ball roll faster. You get to get into things and get out of things much easier. It's much smoother, you know, because it's not just you making the decision <clears throat> or it's just not like the male making the decision. Like you're able to talk to somebody else and figure out what's the best strategy to get in and get out. And again, at the end, I do want to see you accomplished. Now, the next one, sense of humor. On my life, you cannot come into my life if you are not funny. Honestly, if she can't laugh, she can't come around. And that's on whatever you want to put it on. Like, that's just honestly facts. Because especially on my dad's side of the family, like our house rule, no matter whose house you're at, it is leave your feelings at the door. Please do not come in with no emotions because once you step past that threshold, every joke that can be thrown will be thrown. It is hours of explicit and uncensored humor. Like, whoever's talking, like, go ahead and talk. But as soon as you throw a joke out or as soon as you're the center of attention, you may now be the center of attention of jokes for a great time period. Like, have you ever had, seen somebody get joked on for three hours, four hours? I have, like, literally, we're moving furniture, helping my cousins move. And they literally clown my one cousin the whole day. And the good thing is, again, he knows the rule. So it's like, if you didn't want to get clowned on, possibly, you shouldn't have came and helped move. But he took that risk. And he was cool with it, because, like, some jokes are just funny. So one that can have a sense of humor, those are a must. 
especially at least in my instance, because like again, if she can't laugh, then she can't come around because I throw jokes just to throw jokes, and that that's just me. So you want to have someone who knows how to laugh, and not just how to laugh. You want to know that she knows how to make you laugh, because again, who wants to just throw jokes all day? Like a lot of us aren't comedians. I'm a comedian, but a lot of us aren't comedians. We're not stand-up artists. We're not just going to keep trying to throw jokes out, throw jokes out, throw jokes out. Like, after a time period, you get tired of talking. Trust me, I get cotton mouth after a minute, and it kind of annoys me. Because it's just like, yo, okay, come on. Is it your turn yet? Like, you want to be able to laugh. Like, again, at times, us telling jokes, sometimes we make ourselves loud. But sometimes you want to hear a joke for once. It's like, yo, I know you have something to say. Like, come on now. Like... You want to find someone who can make you laugh. I got some, like, me personally, I got great friends who, you know, knows how to make me laugh. And, like, some of those friends, or even in the past, like, those friends who became girlfriends, like, it made things better because, like, nah, I'm not just the only one throwing jokes. Like, I have someone who can throw a joke back at me. And the thing is, like, you think about it in your relationship, like, your partner, you're going to spend a lot of time with them. Especially if you guys live together and you're talking about like down the line, like you're going to spend a lot of time with them. And you don't want everything to be all stagnant and kind of bland. Like you want a great vibe. So you want to make sure that she has a sense of humor and you have a sense of humor. Because like the, the sense of humor can also lighten the mood. And lightening the mood at times is a great thing. Because again, like you guys are going to go through hardships. You're going to have issues. You're going to have problems. However... A little joke joke sometimes can, you know, lighten the mood. <clears throat> because, like, at times, like, I know for me, I will be salty, upset, whatever you want to say under that umbrella. I will definitely. But I'll throw a little joke in there. I laugh at myself a lot. You want to know why? Because it lightens the mood and it makes me think more positive. Where it's like, <laughs> you know, things can be worse. And at times, that's not the right idea. However, that's a great idea because if you think about it, like, things can be worse sometimes. And we dwell upon some of the more negative things than we do the positive. Like people who say, oh, I've had a terrible day. When in reality, they might have just fell in a puddle and that puddle lasted for, you know, 35 seconds. And yeah, it might have been, you know, a three minute, four minute saltiness in the car while the seats is wet. But after a minute, you're still sitting in it and, you know, you kind of forget about it. But you let that puddle, you know, that 35 seconds plus three minutes that you were thinking about it, you know, ruin 24 hours. It's like, did you really have a bad day or did you really have a bad moment? Because, <clears throat> like, if you go on later and be like, man, I really fell in the puddle. How stupid of me. Like, you kind of just like, oh, you know what? <laughs> I really fell in the puddle. Like, I'm just so crazy. Like, that right there is what lightens the mood. Especially if, you know, you got somebody there to help that. Because, again, like, something small like that or something larger, we're not going to get to, like, larger ideas and examples, but, you know, other big problems, like, sometimes you need to lighten the mood. It'll make you feel just a little, just a tad better. And when you do that, like, sometimes you can think about the bright side, the positive things. Because, like, again, at times things can be much worse than we make it, but at times we have the tendency to drag it on and it really ruins things. And what jokes, it lightens the mood a little bit. So you want to be able to have that spouse who's able to accept jokes. Again, if they don't have a sense of humor, why are they around? Because overall, you want good vibes. Like, that is what you're aiming for. So it's like, who doesn't like to laugh? Good vibes, laughs. Like, I know personally, like, I prefer a day where if I can just be with friends... And we're doing something pro productive. Not gonna put that in there. We're doing something productive. <laughs> but we're getting laughs like all throughout the day. Like that is worth more to me than taking like a two thousand dollar trip for a week. Like those, you know, you get all this experience in that that trip. You get to see this, that, and the other. But at times you might not always be happy because you think about other things. But you, you talking about you can give me a day, especially if a day out the week where I can just laugh with good people, good vibes, that is amazing. Because at times you can't get those. That's an experience that at times you can't get back. And especially if you don't see those people quite frequently. Like some of my best friends, my brothers, my sisters that I can, I see them as, like I see them a few times out the year. <clears throat> and like when we get together, we try to make the most out of it. Again, we might not go anywhere, 
But we can sit in the living room for four, seven, eight hours just laughing and also being productive. <laughs> Got to throw that out there because, like, yeah, if we're not looking at something productive or we're laughing, but we're talking about something that's important as, a, as our futures go about, then it's like, all right, all right, wasting time, wasting time, do something else. But yeah, like, we're laughing, like, we're getting hours of laughter in. And honestly, that's something big to look at. So finally, can you guess the last one? It's probably my favorite one. In my opinion, it's the best one. It's the independent. We don't have to dwell deep into that, because if you heard the topic a few weeks ago with me and my friend, it was, you, you see why I love an independent woman. Like, she's just amazing. She does her own thing, like... Who doesn't love that because again like when you're able to do what you need to do then guess what now you're moving now you're moving along because she's doing what she has to do and you can do what you have to do so y'all doing what y'all need to do to progress in the future and again if you really plan on having a future with this person then it's like why aren't both the wheels running like think about it like a car like if you got all the wheels on the left side moving, but none of the wheels on the right side moving, what are you doing? You're going in a circle. You're not even moving forward. All you're gonna do is go in a circle. You might move a little bit, but you don't have no balance. There's there's nothing keeping both sides of the car afloat. Not really afloat. <laughs> but evenly on the road. <laughs> and that's what you need. You need a nice, strong woman who is really doing what she needs to do and you can say on her own, but of course she always comes to you, you know, with ideas, strategic plans. However, she knows that if it comes down to her making the hard decisions because you're not around, she's not going to be scared. She's going to put it into her hands, have confidence that she can, you know, make these tough decisions. And that's what you want. You want somebody who's really handling her business. Because at times, again, if y'all are one, if y'all are really trying to be something, like her business is your business. And your business is her business. So if she's not handling her business, then guess what? That's your business because now your business is not being handled. You get what I'm saying? I ain't gonna fake for a lot of y'all that, that business, her business, your business, your business. It probably went over some y'all heads. But if you think about it, it makes a lot of sense. So to wrap it up as the types of women you want, you want the carer. She's going to be the one to give you that love and affection and really provide that emotional support. You want one that is the supporter. She's going to be the one who always has your back. She's going to be there when you need her if no one else is there. They're really solid. You want one on one assistant humor. She's the one who understands a joke and understands when it might be a joke. Although sometimes we pranks. We do do pranks, but it's okay. She's going to be okay. But she's the one who can, you know, have a laugh, but also make you laugh. Like, she's the one who is that real vibe, and you can't find that frequently, so you make sure you get one. And lastly, you want the independent, because these are the ones who are handling their business, they're getting things done, they don't need a man, but they love that you're there. And they're the ones that you can always count on to handle tough decisions.